And then there are others that say, I'm too young or I'm too old. You see, if the devil can't get you while you're too young to say you're too young, he'll tell you you're too old. And then there are people that say, well, there are too many hypocrites in the church. Well, I agree to that. But you know, there are quacks in every profession, quacks among doctors. I'm never going to go to a doctor again because they're quacks. Grocery man will put his hand sometimes on the scales in the old rural areas and make it weigh more than it really does. Am I not going to buy any more groceries because they're cheating in it? My wife was in a restaurant some time ago and they added uh, something to her bill and she looked at that bill and she knew it didn't belong so she took it to the waitress and said, what happened? I, I, didn't, I didn't order some of these things. She said, I know, but the people that were here before you, they ordered it and they didn't pay for it. We had to put it somewhere. <laughs> now my father was a dairy farmer. And we had dairymen in our area that were accused, allegedly, of putting water in the milk. Now, does that mean that I'll drink no more milk because there's been water in it? What about the watermelons? Sure, I'm going to eat watermelons. Just because some little something and cheese, you know. They, they've got it fixed now so that you can't eat anything. It's going to cause cancer. But the scripture says, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. God condemns the hypocrites. Yes, but that's no excuse for you. No excuse for you. No excuse for you. Because every church that I have ever been to has got some hypocrites in it. Every church. If you find a perfect church, absolutely perfect, and you join it, it'll become imperfect because we're all imperfect. And then there are people that'll say, well, I'll have to give up too much if I come to Christ. Well, you give up a great deal for other things, such as an education or power or money. Harold McMillan, the former prime minister of England, once said, power is the chief motivation of human activity and not money. Whether it's money, power, social prestige, you'll do most anything. God gave up everything he had. He gave up his son for you. Will you come to Christ tonight and surrender to him? What's your excuse? Bev Shea was once asked, what do you know about God? He said, I don't know much about God, but what I do know has changed my life. See, you don't have to know everything about God. You don't have to know everything about the Bible. You don't have to be a theologian to come to Christ. Just come like you are. But the thing that I want you to remember is that this host at this banquet said, none of those that refuse my invitation are going to taste of my food. And Jesus is teaching, Jesus is teaching that if you refuse the offer of mercy and grace and love of God in Christ at the cross, and where he rose again from the dead, if you refuse it, there's no more hope for you. None of these which are bidden shall taste of my supper. They're without excuse.